these are the books that are my first editions, my first love, some of my childhood books, and I really cherish a lot of the items in this room. You know something that I hate, like I really hate this, when book snobs make fun of people for color coordinating their shelves. And I'm here to tell you, as your friendly local witch, that color is one of the most important things in your life and honoring color in your life is something that you should be doing. And for people like me who have a photographic memory, I might not be able to remember the name of an author or the exact name of a book, but I promise you, I remember what color the cover is, so I know how to come back and find things many, many years after I read them. So I think it's very, very important to give credit where credit is due. And there is a mystical woman out there who wrote a book that really changed the course of my life. Um, this book, Italian Folk Magic, Mary Grace Faroon is a nurse, a family woman. She lives in Canada. She is a member of her community. I don't know that you would know that she's a witch. <laughs> and that's what I loved. It is all about her family's Italian heritage, about the magical thinking that she inherited from all the women in her family, about the matriarchs, about the rituals and traditions and the way of looking at things, whether it's religious or superstitious or magical or really like sincere and holy to you. I think that there is a generational and cultural gift here that I really felt like I was lacking. And so I read this book and I was so happy for her that she had people in her life to walk her through her birthright. But then I wanted to find my own. And I did that by writing Grimoire Girl because if you don't have it, but you want to pass it on to your kids, sometimes you just got to make it up. And that's what I did. <laughs> so thank you, Mary Grace. I, I don't know what I would have done without this book. It was a game changer. This next book, oof. Oh, I just cry looking at it. I really do. It means so much to me. Ray Bradbury wrote this book, Dandelion Wine, about his hometown. And it was a tribute to community and the elders in the community and the children of the community and the folklore of the community and about finding magic and just those stupid, silly little everyday things. And as my hometown was being taken over by big business and very quickly disappearing, to read this total stranger's account of their home that was written with so much love, it changed what I thought writing was for. And I strive to live up to that expectation. But this book makes me cry so much because my husband knew how much I loved this book. He's seen me read it dozens of times. And so for Christmas, he got me this first edition that is signed by Ray Bradbury, July 15th, 1958. For Sid, with admiration for a fellow teller of tales, all right, now speaking of novelists that I love, this writer and I actually share a very deep affinity for Ray Bradbury, for public libraries. Um, we've talked about this at length, but Alice Hoffman, the author of Practical Magic and, uh, oh God, The Red Garden is so good. She knows how to tell a story about unlikable people so that by the end of it, you're rooting for them. And as someone who feels unlikable sometimes, I like that there is someone in this world like Alice Hoffman who can find redemption. She sent me just the single most gorgeous book this is a special edition leather bound copy of magic lessons which is a part of the storytelling of the owen sisters so if you like practical magic uh, magic lessons goes all the way back to the root of the owen sisters story and it is just lush and fabulous and alice is someone who i want to celebrate every opportunity i get Okay, these last couple books are 
so near and dear to me. One of the questions in the list of questions that I could answer for this shelf portrait was, am I an ebook reader or do I like paper books? And I think it goes without saying that I like paper books because I think that we attach energy to things. And I know I want to absorb the energy that I get from certain books, but I also want to imprint my own and then pass them on to other people that I care about. And so these books have meant a great deal to me. Edna St. Vincent Millay, I talk about her a ton in Grimoire Girl. She is someone who I am just so inspired by and who, if she lived today, would still be considered audacious and exceptional. And so this is her collection, Renaissance and Other Poems, and it is a first edition. And when I got it, it was important to me because my publisher is Harper One and her publisher is Harper and Brothers. And so to think that I have been able to accomplish something that my hero did, pretty cool. This other book is from Truman Capote. It is The Grass Harp. It is a story about a young boy who runs away with one of his aunts and her best friend, and they live in a tree house, and they come up against some oppression from the town and from standards and normal behavior, and they push back against that. And I love Truman Capote for finding the radical color in a small community. Um, it's my favorite kind of storytelling. And this book is signed by him. Look at his little teeny tiny handwriting. Oh God, I just love him. Whoever Rita, Rita Allen is who this book is to. Um, God bless Rita. And then this last book is a first edition copy of The Grapes of Wrath and was a wedding gift from our dearly, dearly loved Willie Garson. It was something that I wrote about in my book because it meant so much to me. And I have words from the note he wrote along with this book tattooed on my arm. My favorite childhood book is this series, Katie John. I didn't grow up in a family that had a lot of money. And so we just hung out at the public library and there was this set of books about a tomboy named Katie John who left the big city and moved to a historic home, kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and encountered ghosts and a lot of mischief. And if all of that is sounding very familiar to you, I feel like I've modeled my life after this book series. Um, it really made a mark on me and our Sterling Park Public Library knew exactly what direction to point me in. I'm gonna divulge a secret right now and I swear to you, if any of you steal this intellectual property or come for my story, I'm gonna fist fight you. But I read this book, The Secret Life of the Lonely Doll. It is the life story of Dare Wright. I read it when it first came out. I have been obsessed with it. Um, Dare Wright was a children's book author who split her time between New York City and the Outer Banks, which I'm very in love with. And she wrote really interesting stories for kids. Some of them have been controversial, but she was such a weird little fairy of a human. And telling her story is something I've always wanted to do. And so when I start directing, this is something that I very much want to put on screen. It is absolutely Good Neighbors by Sarah Langan. I think she is just such an amazing, sinister writer. And what's so wonderful about her work is that she understands domesticity and how insidious it can be. She understands the microcosm of a neighborhood and what it means on a grander scale. And she can find the absolute horror in the mundane. And I respect her so much. Without question, my answer is Angela Slatter. She is an author from that collection, Hex Life. And I reached out to her and told her I really, really respected her work. And she started sending me copies of her work. I have just shelves of her books and I love each one more than the next. I felt so honored that she named a character after me in her last book. She is such a wonderful 
fantasy horror writer because she understands femininity and she understands how it has been missing in the genre and she understands how to weave it back in and retell an old story through a feminine lens so that it belongs to us now. And I think that that's a really important skill and a really valuable uh, kind of writer to have in your circle of friends. <laughs> the universal truths of oppression of women and magical thinking exist everywhere. And so I so respect that imaginative take um, so many people get bogged down with historical accuracies and Angela plays by her own rules. She's fantastic. My favorite place to read a book. I mean, I want to say it's this room, but it's not. So let's go see how messy my house is. I have one chair in particular and it's this one. That's my reading chair. And there's scooters and there's messy kitchens and there's 13 year olds hanging out. <laughs> but that is mommy's chair and that's where she reads books. I normally buy books at really small independent booksellers and usually when I'm traveling. So my favorite thing in the world is going to a town that I've never been to before and finding the local bookstore and just making friends. My all time fictional crush Guys, this is so toxic. It's really toxic. But I was a Heathcliff girl from Wuthering Heights. I had so many really dramatic romances where I just kept falling for Heathcliffs over and over. And my husband was a bit of a Heathcliff when I met him, but did the work. <laughs> And so that's really what we all want, right? When I read Here's Negan in preparation for doing the episode of The Walking Dead with my husband, I would be lying if I said I didn't have a bit of a crush on that just bad, bad, bad boy. Can't help it. And that leaves us with, ta-da, Grimoire Girl. <laughs> I feel like so many of the books I talked to you about today are deeply woven into this. One of the first things I wanted to do in the very first chapter was give people a list of books that influenced me. Take whatever lights up your world and pull out the quotes that matter to you. Uh, write them down in your own grimoire. Keep the poetry, whether it's song lyrics or sonnets, whatever it is, keep it close to you so that you can share it easily and it can be there for you in times of need. And so as we wrap up this spooky evening in the rain together, um, I really hope you find your own grimoire and that you fill it up with, with stories and ideas and spells and things that you love. And if you need any help, Grimoire Girl's there for you. Thank you for watching Shelf Portrait and for checking out my book, Grimoire Girl. So thanks for hanging out with me and while you guys are at it, you should subscribe to Marie Claire.